Good afternoon, my name is Jackson Scallon and I'm the executive producer for today's show, The Power of Music. This show is about highlighting how Zags are celebrating music on campus through the eyes of some of our very own student musicians. Thank you so much for tuning in to WatchGUTV.com and please enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to GUTV's The Power of Music. I'm your host, Arden Creval, and today we have a very exciting show ahead of us. We'll be featuring inside looks into the lives of different musicians, exploring how students are getting involved with their favorite music, and showcasing undergrads who express themselves creatively with slick rhymes and smooth melodies. Let's hop over to Jacob Dizon at Zagatron to see what it's like to be a music major at Gonzaga. Jacob? Thanks, Arden. GUTV got the chance to gain some insight about how Gonzaga's sophomore and music major Aiden Brown prepares for a day as a vocalist. Let's take a look. My average day as a music major, uh, particularly as a music education major, really just goes for a really long time. I'm taking 18 credits, but I have 10 different classes. My longest distance that I go is from the education building to the music hall, and I have 10 minutes to do that. Uh, so, were my teachers not as understanding as they were about the time constraints, I would be running. Personally, when I do a warm-up, I stretch out my body and then I start stretching out my voice, which is vocal size. <laughs> Doing arpeggios on different syllables. Uh, I really have to work on my vowels, so I do a lot of work with those. <laughs> I also try to activate my diction uh, by doing different tongue twisters. Whether or not they're to a pitch or not, they, they're really helpful and anything that really just gets the breath moving is helpful. What a pity, what a pity, what, 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 zoom, 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 za. What a pity, what a pity, what, 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 zoom, 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 za. Where I am right now is I'm working on memory, so I'll go down, I'll put my music on the piano and I'll give myself a starting note and then I'll just try to sing it. I attempt from love sickness to fly in vain. We're very surprised to see the amount of work it takes to begin the day as a music major. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed listening to those dynamic vocal warm-ups. Anyways, let's toss back to Arden at the anchor desk to showcase our first musical performance. Thanks, Jacob. Our next segment is a feature performance by one of GU's most prominent musical duos. These two singer-songwriters are sisters from Boise, Idaho, who have performed all across the Pacific Northwest. You can frequently catch them performing at the Open Mic Coffeehouse events at the end of each month. We were able to capture an exclusive performance at the stage in the Hemmington Center Student Den. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Maddie. And I'm Ava. And, and you're, you're watching GUTV. She can't. 
Thank you to the Smith sisters for that great performance of their original song just a week ago. I really suggest you go check out their performances at the coffee house. Be sure to stick around also for After the Break, where we'll give you a look into Gonzaga's first ever internet radio station. See how a new up, up and coming music club is making a name for itself and watch one of our very own GUTV students spit bars about Gonzaga Broadcasting. You're watching The Power of Music on GUTV. I'm fine, you know, this year's going a lot better. I'm making friends, I'm not as homesick. I've started talking about it. I, I don't take those meds anymore. And those thoughts, they just, they don't scare me as much. But am I okay? I mean, I think I'm okay. I don't really know what to tell people. No one's really asked me that in a while. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hi. Good. Hi. How are you? Good. Hi. How are you? Good. Hi. How are you? Good. 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 Yeah. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? No, really. How are you? Well, I'm studying for two tests I have tomorrow, which is kind of unfortunate, but I'm looking forward to the weekend. I'm going on a mountaineering trip, and that's going to be so much fun. We have to leave it. Welcome back to The Power of Music. Our next segment is about a new student-run organization that's bringing Zags together through the power of internet radio. Let's take a look to see what it's all about. Gonzaga University's first student-run radio station, known as iZag Radio, just celebrated their one-year anniversary this month. The 24-7 online radio station can be found on the third floor of the Hemison Center. I spoke with Frances Minigan, one of the radio station's managers, to learn more about what her role within Isaac is and what goes on within the small 300 square foot room. My position, I've kind of taken over like the tech role and communication within the group, mm -hmm. um, while Will is kind of like the exterior, like marketing and um, promotions and that kind of stuff. So we have um, tw about 20 shows in total, I think, this semester, um, and there's like eight live shows and the rest are podcasts and live shows are broadcast live obviously there's like music shows there's talk shows there's sports shows i asked francis what robert perry and sam takizawa the founders of isaac radio and gutv alumni had taught her before taking the job yeah um they just they taught us how to um like work with people like in a casual way and while also like maintaining like a professional relationship but also they've taught like Robert came back and taught us like so much tech stuff so yeah they've been super helpful in the process. Isaac has accomplished a lot in such a short span but will still look to make improvements for the future. Um, we're hoping to get an app out um, where people can listen there because people I mean no one wants to like log on to their computer and like listen so hopefully an app um, Hopefully we'll get on iHeart and like a couple other sites like that 
If you are interested in learning more about the station, go check out izagradio.com for more information. Broadcasting majors are very active at IZAG, and several of us actually have weekly shows on air, including me and Jackson. You can tune in to the new station live by visiting izagradio.com, and you can even listen to previous live shows and podcasts at soundcloud.com slash izagradio. Students who are passionate about music are continually finding new outlets to express themselves and celebrate the music they love. GU's Hip Hop Club is a new up-and-coming organization that, while only in its first year, has already a profound influence on campus. Jacob Dizon went out and produced this new segment that discusses the origins of the club and shows some of the best highlights from the concert the club put on last Friday. Enjoy. Whether it be the rhyme, rhythm, or reason, over the last few decades, hip-hop music has had a profound impact in our society. From the earlier days of Tupac and N.W.A. to today's rap stars like Kendrick Lamar and Kanye West, over the last few years, hip-hop music has remained prominent in today's music industry. Here at GU, we have a group that has a keen appreciation for those behind the rhyme. Gonzaga's own Hip Hop and Rap Club is a new group on campus that celebrates the power of hip hop. During their sophomore year at Gonzaga, current students Gabe Rivas and Evan Watson established the Hip Hop and Rap Club as an attempt to introduce the hip hop culture to our community. A lot of what we're trying to do is uh, educate or promote hip-hop in a way maybe that some aren't accustomed to if they don't listen to it or just have these preconceived notions about it uh, like stereotypes that it's just about sex money drugs but in reality if they had actually uh, took the time uh, to go delve a bit deeper than what they're accustomed to than what's playing on the radio they'd find that it has a lot more meaning uh, behind it the group meets Thursday nights in College Hall where they discuss their favorite rap music while also having lecture-style meetings where they learn about different ways in which rap culture influences our lives. We are getting guest speakers to come in to talk about kind of hip-hop and social justice. We are having this concert on Friday, bringing out artists from Seattle so people could listen to hip-hop firsthand. And we're having a lot of things planned for the future, maybe like a trek to Seattle so we could go check out more well-known artists and things along that nature. The concert took place on Friday, November 17th. The event featured Seattle-based rapper Travis Thompson, as well as GU students Jesus McClowski and Ronald Chan. Being one of the first times that a hip-hop event has taken place at Gonzaga, we sent out a camera crew to cover the show. first show behind them and many exciting plans for the future, it's safe to say that Gonzaga's hip hop and rap club has already made strides here at GU. As they continue to celebrate their love for the rhyme, they work to uncover the power of music right here on campus. Jacob Dizon, GU TV. And we're joined live now with Jacob. And Jacob, we were both at that concert yes. and I can honestly say that was a lot of fun and a great experience. Yeah, definitely it was. I think that it was really quintessential to our Gonzaga's mission and being ones who express ourselves individually. And you really saw the creative minds just mm -hmm. flourishing at that concert. And what I also enjoyed about it is the fan experience, just being there and listening to that music and how all the fans even knew some of the lyrics and just jamming out to it. It was a great experience to watch. Yeah, it was very neat. Um, sometimes you see some performers come to venues and they don't give it their full, but you didn't see that at all with uh, Travis Thompson as well as Gritty and the other rappers mm -hmm. that were there. They were really on their game and they had passion, and that's what I really liked to see, and it was a great concert to attend. Hopefully we'll see a lot more from the Hip Hop Club. Most definitely. Jacob, I actually have a clip with me about you rapping and about GUTV. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Um, our executive, pro pro executive producer, Jackson Scallon, asked if I could uh, make a little rap about what it means to be in broadcasting, be at GUTV, and I felt like very compelled to talk about that, so um, I gave it a go. That's great. I'm excited to look at it. Let's take a look. G 
GUTV always on the rise And we never out of focus cause we always on the grind From the studio to campus we always got the vision We just making television back behind the scenes here All we do is prosper Sticking to the script yo feed the teleprompter We a tightly knit crew like a team on a roster GUTV's the product that we foster We're always in the zone cause we'll soon be on the map Every day we're making strides the future's in our hand Turn it up, play it back, skip ahead so you can hear this is only the premiere. Shout out to 303. It's your boy Snake. We're going in. <laughs> that was awesome. I really enjoyed that. I know it was a little silly, but I think that it's kind of expressive of um, the way that I feel about GUTV, our community at Gonzaga, is something that is very important to me, and I felt like I just wanted to express that, let it all out. And, I, and I'm sure all of the GUTV members feel the exact same way that you feel. Do you can feel we, that way? I feel yeah. that way, yes, definitely. <laughs> can we actually get to be able to see you at an upcoming concert at some point? Uh, we'll see. I don't have any current plans in the future for that, but you never really know. I guess I just got to keep rolling with it. If you guys want some more, maybe the snake will provide. Oh, we, we <laughs> want some more. We're, we're going to look forward to all that. Right. All right. Stay tuned because after the break, I'll be interviewing two very skilled Zag musicians about what it means to express themselves through their music on Gonzaga's campus. You're watching The Power of Music on GUTV. The experience that you have abroad is going to be as meaningful, I believe, as the effort that you put into it. I hope that what Study Abroad and what the Center for Global Engagement in particular does is that it opens up the whole campus to both differences and both that engagement, that willingness to change, and by doing that lift you up in a way that expands your mind and helps you engage the world in a different way. Go abroad. This is it, round zero. This is where it all started. The epidemic, the masks, the quarantine, the chaos. This is where it all began. Remember to wear your mask and report all symptoms. May God be with us all. And this is where it could have all been stopped. Right now. Thanks for reminding me. Welcome back to the Power of Music. At GU, we have a diverse range of artists and lyricists. We are very fortunate to have two very skilled musicians joining us in the studio. And they are Ryland Vernig and Jesus McCluskey. Guys, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules to joining us on GUTV. Yeah, thanks for having us. Of course, us. yeah. So I'm going to start with you, Rylan. Um, you are a music major, correct? Yes, indeed. Performance. All right. And you play the violin. Yes. So what's that like? What kind of classes do you actually take here? Uh, I take the core music classes. So that includes uh, Music Theory 1 through mm -hmm. Music Theory 4, uh, Ear Training 1 through 4. Uh, I'm currently enrolled in Conducting 101. Mm -hmm. And in, as far as ensembles, I'm in uh, the Gonzaga Symphony Orchestra as well as a chamber group. That's string great. Quartet. Thank you for that. And Jesus, you're a rapper, correct? That's correct. And your name is Gritty. What's the story behind that? Um, so originally, the first time I was like trying to come up with like a cool rap name, I was like, I want to take a celebrity name and like flip it. Oh, okay. So that was like, it was like, I was like Jimi Hendrix. I was like, ooh, Gritty Hendrix. <laughs> and then like. Um, 
there's this guy named Grizzy Hendrix. You could look him up. I was like, dude, this is way too close to my name. So I just like took it out and I took the X from Hendrix, put it right in the middle. Uh, X in the middle, you could Google me better now. So That actually maybe. happens to a lot of rappers. They get their name taken away from somebody else that they find on the internet. So that's pretty interesting yeah. how that happened. Yeah. So, Rylan, we actually have a clip of you playing the violin, and I'm very happy to say that was pretty impressive. We're going to take a look now. So you took a lot of time probably to play that. How many hours do you actually play a day? Oh, a day, it ranges depending on how many classes I have a day, but I try to, I try to play for an hour, an hour and a half a day. Uh, when on symphony days, sometimes three or four hours, including oh, wow. symphony, so. And I'm sure classes get in the way of that, but of going back to the classes, you mentioned ear training. What's mm -hmm. that all about? So ear training, uh, a lot of people called Mozart a boy genius because anything he could hear he could write down and dictate on a staff paper. And I guess that's kind of the premise of the class is to try to teach us how to do that. Oh, wow. It's I'm, very fun. I'm going to have to look into that as an elective for me. <laughs> so, hey, Seuss, we also have a clip of you rapping from the concert. And I honestly have to say, the energy that you put into that concert was really impressive. We're going to take a look now. What is faith? So that was pretty impressive at that concert. Did you really like feel the energy from all the student population there? Yeah, um, I don't know how many people at Gonzaga actually have heard of my music, but um, like if, if, if I didn't know that Travis was the headliner, I would have thought that I was the headliner. There was so much <laughs> love in the crowd and like it was just nice to see everybody, I would say hands up, they put their hands up, like it was, it was all the love. Did you see an increase in people listening to your music? I'm sure you have a SoundCloud account or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did actually like right after the concert I got like a few follows on Twitter That's awesome. a few listens on SoundCloud so hopefully it keeps going up um, trying to spread my name around campus are you planning any shows coming up I mean you're looking like you're going all the way to the top now <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually over uh, Thanksgiving break when I'm back home on the west side of Washington I have a show on um, Black Friday mm -hmm. uh, over at the Vera project it's near a Seattle Center oh wow and so yeah it's it's like a, almost like a little tour, I would say, in Spokane, Seattle. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah, no, it's going to be a good time. I'm sure we'll see some, you'll see a couple of GU students checking you out there. At I that hope place. so. Yeah, I, hope, I so. hope so too for you. Uh, Ryland, going back to your violin playing, <clears throat> who was your major influences that got you into that? Oh, uh, there's too many to count, but if I had to choose two major influences, uh, a man named Scott Esty and a man named Andrew Ehrlich back in Portland. Mm -hmm. I started with Scott Esty when I was three years old. And when I moved uh, teachers to Andrew Ehrlich, I was probably eight or nine, and they just, they were able to capture my passion for music and put it into music. So I owe them so much. What kind of things did they teach you to become such a great violin player? Uh, not to be able to describe what it is to play violin, but to feel it. They, they used to try to make me describe in words what it feels like to play certain passages, such as chocolatey tones, and they used to have me sway and move with the music, that w and it was so fun. Uh, to see music from that side because it's really not something you can teach and they were just trying to have me find it myself so you mentioned chocolatey tones for our viewers that don't know what that means and especially yes. me because i don't know what yes. that means what uh, is that? yes chocolatey tones uh, i would categorize that as rich sound uh, deep uh -oh. really low tones that you, you kind of just feel warm to mm -hmm. Is there anything describe. similar to that, like different types of tones that we can mention? Chocolate tones, maybe there's oh, like savory tones? Savory tones, uh, sweet, okay. brilliant, uh, oh yeah, all types of tones. That's but, great. Yeah. And I'm going to go back to you, Jesus, because I just remembered, uh, you headlined Travis Thompson, who's an upcoming artist. He was on the Jimmy Fallon show two days before he came to Gonzaga. Did he give you any like 
information or kind of advice going into that concert? Um, no, but uh, ironically enough, I've ran into Travis a few times in the Seattle music scene. Oh, wow. And me and him, uh, the same way he got connected to Macklemore, I got connected through a similar program uh, just a few years after he did. And so, uh, yeah, so we're kind of like trained by the same people in, a, in like a weird way. Um, we cross paths and... And so he didn't like directly say like he said good luck and whatnot like usual but um but there's there's definitely like a a connection through the local seattle artist that um that connects us and and has that bond like i know that um, i got him he got me kind of thing that's great what kind of uh did travis thompson or uh macklemore influence you in any way because they are from seattle and so are you yeah um I would say Macklemore, a few months ago, I saw my first Macklemore concert. He invited uh, me to come to his concert in Arizona, and uh, and I've, I've never been a huge fan of Macklemore's music. I've liked a few songs here and there, but seeing him live was like, man, I need to step my stage performance up. <laughs> I was like, this is like why Macklemore is, why he sells out tours all the time, yeah. because his stage presence is so great. And so I was like, I'm going to bring that energy right to Gonzaga when I come, and so I, I tried to do it, and I think I, I think I did that. You mentioned stage performance. What did you learn from Travis Thompson in his performance after you? You probably got a little pointers just from watching him. Yeah, um, during that same concert when I was watching uh, Macklemore, he was, this is the tour that uh, Travis was opening up for Macklemore the whole tour. And, uh, and seeing him go, like, I was like, oh, I'm in his position opening up for him. And, um, and so like, I got to find out ways, how can, I, how can I engage the audience? Even though an audience they didn't come to see me, they came to see Travis. And so I saw him do those things. And, and there was like there was times where I would uh, show the audience my uh, like teach them the hook or something, mm -hmm. and I would like yeah. get the crowd involved. And I think that was um, a few things that I picked up. You definitely got to do that with new listeners and people that aren't familiar with you. So you did a great job with that. Thank you, guys. I want to appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules. I know you probably want to want to go home for Thanksgiving, so we really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed making it for you guys. We here at GUTV would like to give a huge thank you to all the musicians who made an appearance on our show. And thank you, our audience, for tuning in and making this possible. I'm Arden Cravalho, and this was The Power of Music. Have a good night and a great Thanksgiving break. <laughs>